There is a reason why human instinct tells us to fear the deep water. The prehistoric ocean wasn't just an ecosystem, it was a criminal underworld. These aren't just apex predators, they are the ocean's first serial killers. The addict who ate himself to death, the stalker who struck from the shadows, the cannibal who murdered his own family. But they are just the beginning. Today, we are compiling the profiles of the eight deadliest offenders to ever patrol the deep. To kick things off, we are starting with a creature that literally couldn't stop eating. This is the glutton. It lived 80 million years ago, in the late Cretaceous period. Back then, the American Midwest wasn't a prairie, it was a shallow, suffocating body of water known as the Western Interior Seaway. Paleontologists call this place Hell's Aquarium. And ruling the straightaways of this hell was the Sefactinus. Growing up to 20 feet long, this monster was built like a biological torpedo. Its massive forked tail allowed it to hit burst speeds estimated at 40 miles per hour. But it wasn't its speed that made it a monster, it was its mouth. The beast possessed a massive protruding underbite, a grimace that looked like a bulldog mixed with a piranha. But look closer at the dental profile. It didn't have serrated teeth for cutting meat into polite chunks. It had long, irregular spikes designed for one thing, grasping. This biological design created a deadly problem. Because it couldn't chew its food, the glutton had only one option. It had to swallow its victims whole. This physical limitation triggered a fatal psychological defect. Scientists described this creature as having zero impulse control. It possessed a feed-first, think-later pathology. It didn't care if the prey was too big to fit, it just saw food. And in the Western Interior Seaway, greed is a death sentence. The smoking gun lies in a fossil, discovered in the Niobrara Chalk in Kansas. A crime scene frozen in stone for 80 million years. It is known as the fish within a fish. It captures a 13-foot predator in the act of attacking a 6-foot gillicus. Think about that. This predator tried to swallow a prey animal half its own size in a single bite, but the meal was too big. The evidence suggests the prey didn't die immediately. As it was swallowed, it likely thrashed inside the glutton's stomach, rupturing organs and tearing the predator apart from the inside and out. The glutton succeeded in the hunt, but failed the survival test. It sank to the bottom of the chalk sea with a full stomach, killed by its own inability to stop. But while the glutton was loud, fast, and reckless, the next monster on our list preferred to never be seen at all. For our second profile, we're moving away from brute force and into the realm of psychological horror. This is the stalker. We are still in the late Cretaceous, but out here in the open ocean, there is nowhere to hide. Or at least, that's what the prey thought meet the Elasmosaurus. For decades, we've had this romantic image of this animal. You've seen the drawings, a majestic creature holding its head high above the waves like a swan. But recent biomechanical studies have completely shattered that image. The reality was much darker. The stalker had 72 neck vertebrae. For context, you and I have seven. A giraffe has seven. This thing had 72. But here's the twist. It physically couldn't lift its head out of the water like a swan. If it tried, gravity would have snapped its neck. Instead, that neck was designed for one specific purpose, biological stealth. It was a living periscope. It hunted by keeping its massive 20-foot body deep in the dark, murky water hidden from view. Meanwhile, its small, snake-like head would sneak up into a school of fish from below. The fish never saw the monster. They never felt a pressure wave because the head was so small. They just saw a shadow and then teeth. It didn't chase you down, it watched you. It waited until you felt safe and then it struck from the darkness. It was the ultimate creeper of the Cretaceous. But if the stalker was creepy, our next profile is just straight up violent. Now this next profile brings us face to face with the shark that nightmares are made of. This is the mutilator. Scientifically, it's known as Cretoxorhina, but paleontologists have a different nickname for it, the Ginsu shark. 
Now we all know sharks are dangerous, but modern great whites have serrated teeth, like steak knives, designed to saw through meat. The mutilator evolved something worse. Its teeth were smooth. They were covered in a thick layer of razor-edged enamel. These weren't saws, they were scalpels, and they grew up to two inches long. This shark didn't just bite prey, it chopped it. It was designed to slice off tails and fins in a single pass to immobilize the victim before going in for the kill. And we aren't just guessing about this behavior. We have the physical evidence. In the fossil records of Kansas, we found a single vertebra belonging to a mosasaur, a massive marine reptile that should have been untouchable. But embedded deep inside that bone was the tip of a Cretoxorhina tooth. Forensics tells us the bone healed over the tooth. That means this shark attacked a lethal apex predator, chopped into its spine, and left it to suffer. This wasn't a wrestling match, it was a high-speed execution. Biomechanical models suggest the mutilator hit its prey with the ballistic force of a car crash, stripping the engine before the victim even stopped moving. It wasn't a clean kill, it was a hit and run with a knife. The mutilator proves that in this ocean, size didn't matter. If you had the sharpest weapons, you could take on a giant. But our next profile didn't need sharp teeth. It didn't even need teeth at all. We're going way back in time for this next one. Long before the dinosaurs or the giant marine reptiles took over, the ocean belonged to a different kind of monster. This is the Crusher. Welcome to the Devonian period. About 360 million years ago, the water is murky, low in oxygen, and full of armored prey. To survive here, you didn't need speed. You needed heavy artillery. Meet the Dunkleosteus. This was the first armored tank in history. But the most terrifying thing about this profile isn't its armor, it's the mouth. If you look at the skull, you'll notice something strange. It has no teeth. Instead, evolution gave it two pairs of exposed bony plates that acted like self-sharpening industrial shears. Every time it opened and closed its jaw, those plates ground against each other, keeping them razor sharp. But sharpness wasn't its main weapon. Physics was. Biomechanical studies show that the crusher's jaw operated on a complex four-bar linkage system. This allowed it to throw its mouth open in just 20 milliseconds. That speed created a massive suction vacuum underwater, literally pulling prey into its mouth before they could even turn to swim away. And once you were inside, the jaws slammed shut with 5,300 newtons of force. To put that in perspective, that's enough pressure to shear right through the chainmail armor of a primitive shark. It didn't chew its food, it pulverized it. It was the first creature to ask a terrifying question. What happens when an unstoppable force meets a movable object? But while the crusher relied on brute force, our next profile was playing a much smarter game. Moving on to profile number five, we need to clear up a massive controversy right now. This is the ambush specialist, the Leopleurodon. Now pop culture and certain TV documentaries lied to you. They told you this thing was 25 meters long, the biggest killer of all time. That is false. The reality is it grew to about 21 feet, but don't let the size downgrade fool you. This animal didn't need to be the biggest because it was the most technically advanced hunter of its era. The Liopleurodon was the special forces operator of the deep. Its weapon wasn't size, it was smell. Its nose was designed with distinct chambers that allowed water to flow through, giving it directional smelling. It could smell in stereo. Just like you use two ears to hear where a sound is coming from, the ambush specialist used two nostrils to pinpoint exactly where a blood plume was drifting from in 3D space. It could track a wounded animal through pitch black water from miles away. Imagine standing in a pitch black room with a killer who is wearing night vision goggles. That is what it was like to be hunted by the ambush specialist. You are blind, he is not and he knows exactly where your jugular is. And when it arrived, it used a unique four-flipper propulsion system. Robotic tests have shown that this design wasn't great for long-distance cruising, but it was incredible for explosive acceleration. It was a phantom. 
One minute, the water is empty. The next, a 20-foot reptile accelerates out of the gloom, locks onto your scent, and hits you before you even know you're bleeding. It was cold, calculated, and efficient. But our next profile? He didn't need to hide. He wanted you to know he was coming. If the last guy was a hitman, this next prehistoric monster was the boss. We call him the Godfather. We are entering the early Cretaceous of Australia. Back then, a vast inland sea covered the continent. And patrolling those waters was the Kronosaurus. Paleontologists named it after Kronos, the Greek titan who ate his own children. And the name fits. This wasn't a stealth hunter. It was an enforcer. It grew up to 35 feet long, with a head the size of a forklift. While the stalker used finesse, the Godfather used overwhelming power. Biomechanics researcher Colin McHenry analyzed the skull structure of this beast and estimated a bite force of nearly 30,000 newtons. That is twice the power of a modern saltwater crocodile. It didn't just bite flesh, it crushed bone. We know this because of what we found in its stomach. The fossilized remains confirm that the Kronosaurus actively hunted long-necked plesiosaurs, the relatives of our stalker, from earlier. It would charge them, clamp its jaws onto their bodies, and simply crush their rib cages instantly. It was a super predator that specialized in killing other alpha predators. But even the Godfather would have hesitated to cross our next subject. For this next profile, we're jumping forward to the age of whales. But this wasn't a gentle giant. This is the Warlord. Its scientific name is Liviatan, Melvilli, named after the author of Moby Dick and the biblical sea monster, the Leviathan. And unlike modern sperm whales, which use suction to eat squid, this whale was built for war. It possessed the largest biting teeth of any animal in history. I want you to visualize a T Rex tooth. It's about six inches long. The Liviatan had teeth that grew up to 14 inches. That is over a foot of solid enamel, rooted deep in the jaw to withstand extreme stress. It needed these weapons because it wasn't hunting fish. It was hunting other whales. It lived in the same waters as the Megalodon, and many paleontologists believe the Warlord was the only creature brave enough, or crazy enough, to challenge the giant shark for territory. It also had a secret weapon. Its massive skull held a basin for a spermaceti organ, a giant pocket of oil and wax. Some theories suggest it could use this dense, oil-filled head as a battering ram to slam into opponents with the force of a freight train. It was the king of the Miocene period. But to find the most disturbed criminal on our list, the one who broke nature's oldest law, we have to go back to the Cretaceous for one final case. Nature usually tells animals to protect their own kind. You fight for territory, you fight for mates, but you rarely try to eradicate your own family. But our final subject? He didn't care. This is the cannibal. Scientifically, this is Mosasaurus hoffmanni, the T-Rex of the deep. 50 feet of pure muscle and bad attitude. For years, we thought they were just dominant predators. But when we started looking closer at their fossils, we noticed a disturbing pattern. We found skulls with brutal, unhealed puncture wounds. When forensics matched the bite marks, they didn't come from sharks. They didn't come from Kronosaurus. They matched the teeth of other Mosasaurs. This wasn't ritual combat. In ritual combat, animals wrestle or nip to show dominance. These were lethal blows to the head designed to kill and the evidence gets darker. We have found the fossilized stomach contents of a related species, Prognathodon. Inside its gut were the bones of three other mosasaurs. They were eating their own kind. It practiced a scorched earth policy of dominance. If it breathed, it died. If it swam, it was food. And if it looked like family, it was just a rival that hadn't been eliminated yet. In the end, this monster was so dominant, so lethal, that it ran out of enemies. The only thing in the ocean that could threaten a mosasaur was a bigger mosasaur. From the glutton who couldn't stop eating, to the king.
cannibal who ate his kin. The prehistoric ocean wasn't a paradise. It was a violent, chaotic arena where the only law was physics and the only verdict was death. If you want to dive deeper into the forbidden corners of this planet, hit that subscribe button.